into a city that's set on a hill. Its ruler and maker is the Lord God above. Oh, I'm going to a city and it's set on a hill. And someday I'll be in heaven and there'll be no sorrow there. Oh, I'm going to a city. It lies four square. The gates are made of jasper and I'll see Jesus. Hello, everybody. God bless you today. This is Susan Puzio, and I want to welcome you to the Prophetic News Radio. And we're heard on many different platforms, on Spreaker. We're heard on Apple, iTunes, many different platforms are out there. And we also have our website, Prophetic News Radio. And our other website, propheticnews.com. And if you want to read my book, President Trump's Pastor, and does he need Jesus right now? Amen. But anyway, President Trump's pastor, Paula White, the miracle-selling huckster, who became the spiritual advisor to the world's most powerful man. And if you go to Amazon, you can look at the Kindle, click on the Kindle version. And if you don't have a Kindle, you can get the free Kindle app download on Amazon too. So if you you don't have the Kindle, you can download the app and you can read the book from today, which is Friday, until Tuesday, the 29th of August. So... If you have any friends that think Paula White's a Christian, <laughs> they need to read my book. It's it's an investigative report, really, on uh, her her false testimonies and her three marriages. And the girl's got issues. Let me tell you that she needs to be saved. It's very very tragic, but. Anyway, the book's there if you want to read it and let me know how you liked it. You can email me, susan at propheticnews.com. If you have any other questions or uh, comments, you can email me there. We also have our YouTube channel, Prophetic News TV, and we have quite a few good videos there that can help people. Sometimes people don't really know what's going on. And they don't have the time. Most people don't have the time to do the research that we have the time to do. So there's other people that do research too, and thank God for these people, because we can really help the body of Christ to see things that maybe they don't really know about, like fake news and that kind of thing. Because we have fake news in the church too. It's not just in the world where you have fake news. But anyway, I'm going to bring on my guest here, our friend and sister in the Lord, Jackie Alnor. Greetings, everybody. Yes, it's Jackie, and we're here to do our monthly program. Yeah, I always look forward to it. We always have a good time. Yeah, we do. We do. We can't hardly believe some of the things that are going on. No, no. Yeah. There was one person that, and then that Mike Pence, I'm, uh, I'll, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yeah, yeah, but he too wouldn't stand up for the unborn. And he goes to Mrs. Moon, the cult leader, and says she mm. praises her. He's been there three or four right. times. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, you know what? We're not going to, we're not going to find a real true sold out believer uh, up on any of those platforms, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, because because Christianity isn't popular. In fact, it's less popular today than, than it's ever been since it began, you know, unfortunately. Be- and, and I think that's just because oversaturation, and, and I knew, and I had this discussion with my friend, the late Dave Hunt, back in the 80s. I said, I remember asking Dave, what do you think? Why do you think the Lord has even allowed this, you know, uh, the Trinity Broadcasting Network to go on and to keep going on when they're bringing so much false teaching into the whole world? And and he says, 
he says, I really believe that it they are building up the platform for the coming of the Antichrist. Yeah. That's what he said. And and then, of course, as time played out and more things happened since since then, that was probably about 85, 85, 86. Uh, they they got worse and worse as they went along because they just got so prideful and protective that they really started, you know, they they really played dirty behind the scenes yeah. just to just to try to hold their position, and uh, and yeah. boy. I mean, I wrote a book on it. People can go to ChristianSentinel.com and read The Fleecing of Christianity for free. It's on a PDF. You don't even need a Kindle. But anyway, but I documented those things and and recorded all of the praise-a-thons and everything from probably about when I got my first VCR. And I guess it was around 84, 85, you know, those old ones that you push the button and hit record. <laughs> but I, I did. I, I documented so much stuff because I got so tired of people saying, and, and Dave and I had this talk too because I got a lot of clips for Dave and, and for Walter Martin, but it's like they don't believe you right. unless you show them because right. they'll say, oh, he, I never heard him yeah, say that. Yeah, I watch yeah. him all the time, and he never said yeah, that. Yeah, you know. And then when you put it in their face, what do they do? They don't admit that okay, you're right. He did say that. No, they they, well, well, you're taking it out of context. Oh, well, that's not what he meant. <laughs> any, <laughs> any sort of gymnastics they can pull to make the, what the person said not really mean what they actually said. Oh, I mean, it was really crazy back then. I think when the whole team at Christian Research Institute together wrote. Um, the Christianity in Crisis with by author, you know, Hank Hanegraaff. Yeah, I say that yeah, in air, yeah, in air yeah, quotes. Yeah, yeah. We um, know who helped with that book. But but it, it but I I am happy that the both the book did get published and that a lot of people saw we we documented everything. We had all the footnotes. And I say we it because was a good again, book. Yeah, this very really yeah. good book. Again, the footnotes was was the research department and my husband and I, my husband was the uh, news editor of the Christian Research Journal, but we won't go, go into all that, uh, you know, or, or... So in other words, Hank yeah. used your information. Oh, mine, but not just mine. You know, my, I think, I know that it was mine, that he was going to help me with the, with a book I was writing on the topic and then he just took my outline. <laughs> Then whatever. But and then he never gave you any credit or any money. That, that's, that's okay. I, I just, I, I thought it was very important for that information to get out there. And I didn't have a, a, a famous name. And I don't now. And I probably never will in order for people yeah, to be Yeah, but he didn't have a famous thing. name either. No, at no. At the time. But, no, be, but Walter Martin did. And yeah, so well, Walter, you worked for Walter Martin. Right. But so. I mean, it was all that, it was all, you know, he, he. He, that's what opened the door for him is association with Walter Martin. Um, yeah, and it, exactly. it never helped me any, but <laughs> you know, that's, that's okay. It was important that once that, that got out there, that book got quoted with all of the documentation that was in it. It got quoted by many other authors, many other researchers and yeah. people. And, and I think that that more than any other book got got the the basis of like what the word faith people teach and the and the error of the prosperity gospel yeah, and all did. those things it was groundbreaking at the time well, yeah. yeah and hundreds of footnotes because everything was documented and so and that's why i helped with the audio uh presentation of it which was not just the book on tape but it was a whole presentation about those topics and i provided the the bulk of the of the clips for that and and that was so important because people had to hear those things with yes, their own ears. Yes. And so, you know, now. Before the internet. Yeah, and it was before YouTube. I mean, now yeah. it's like, well, I don't have to do that anymore because there's so many people, you know, that are getting those things out on YouTube. And so they're doing it so I don't have to listen to that stuff anymore. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. You know, because I, 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 I did my journey there and now i'm i'm now that the damage is done there's nothing you can do it's already done and the best you can do is 
you know, try to help people if if they're confused and they don't know the foundation of yeah. some of the things that the current false teachers are teaching. Because these guys are nothing but a bunch of plagiarists. They they uh, they don't even invent new heresies. They just pick up the old ones. They do. They do. <laughs> they. I was listening to uh, Wimber, and so he was talking about the shift which that's a big one now, and the portal. Yeah. I don't know if he was talking about the portal. That's a big one, too. No, the third wave. Oh, that was his big thing. Yeah. Yeah, the wave. The wave, yeah, the, yeah. Third, the wave and the wind. Yeah, I'm still yes. waiting. for the. I see a wave, but it's going the wrong way. <laughs> it's a tsunami. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, Lord, please help. We need, we need help. I said, I'm going to take a break from the internet and from the news because I, I just can't even believe what's going on. And especially what's going on in the so-called church, what a mess it is. And it, it was never meant to be such a mess, but it, no. it, we've got a big job on our hands and we need all the help we could get, that's for sure. Yeah, well, it's it's but it's prophesied, and that's why I like the name yeah. of your program because these are very prophetic times. Yes. As as you know, and we're not talking about extra biblical prophecy. We're talking about the Bible, yes. and the the Bible has enough prophecy about the 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 whole plan of God from Genesis to Revelation all the way through. We don't need all the extra biblical, you know, you know, God told me this in an audible voice. Yeah, that, because it's all there. I'm yeah, like, it's all there. You can't yeah, add so to or take away from it. I love you, my children. Um, yes, I know. I already know. That's a prophecy. Yeah, right, right. I didn't need to hear that from you. <laughs> or, or even these, these heaven hoppers, the one who have been to heaven. I don't need what you say you saw when you were having your hallucination because yeah. I already know there's a heaven. I already know yeah. that there's a new Jerusalem waiting yeah. for us, you know? So, yeah, they add nothing of any benefit when they add to it. No, that's true. No, They don't add any benefit except they want to have some kind of fame or fortune. I don't care if anybody knows my name. I, I care if they know the name of Jesus. And Absolutely. I care about my work. I care about getting the information out there that we've spent hundreds of hours of our time doing the research and trying to get the information out to people. So that's what I care about is that the truth gets out. But a lot of mm -hmm. these people, it's like they want to be the next big thing. And that gets you into trouble. Oh, I know. And especially when people are promoting themselves. That, and you see so much of that. Um, well, it used to just be on Christian television, but now, oh boy, I, I do watch some of the people on YouTube. I guess now some of the craziest stuff that I follow is like some of the flat earthers that are on YouTube. I have a couple of my little favorites that I watched. I, and I don't mean to just laugh at them, but it's <laughs> it is pretty funny. Um, but you see, I think I think that's YouTube is more popular than any Christian television network. Yeah, YouTube is very popular. If you could get them to release whatever algorithm they have against you. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not talking about just what we produce on YouTube, but what we watch on YouTube, because that's where people are getting their information about about religion yeah. is from is from YouTube. And boy, there's a plethora of options. You know, the whole smorgasbord. There really is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. There's there's plenty of information out there for people to have. But yet, I find it's very difficult to contact some of these people with the, this information age that we have. I had to I put up a open letter to Mario Murillo uh because I want I wanted to ask him what he thought of Donald Trump being with Mrs. Moon. <laughs> uh, let me know because you're you're supporting him and you're worried about him, but you better be worried about him if he goes over to Mrs. Moon and calls her a wonderful person. Then you better be worried about her. So I never heard from Mario and I put a comment on Stephen Strang's page. I, he never answered me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many hundreds of emails I've sent out to different people. Sometimes people answer me. Uh, well, rarely, yeah, Steve, rarely. a lot of some people don't know those names, but Stephen Strang is the original publisher of Char of Charisma magazine. Yeah. 
And uh, Mario Murillo was part of the Jesus, Jesus movement all the way back in the 60s in Northern California. He was an evangelist on the campus of Berkeley, you, uh, you know, UC Berkeley. And, and he did a lot of good things back in the yeah, day. And too, now yeah. I think Stephen Strang was a was a market, you know, marketing the church guy from the get go. But yeah. Mar- Mario fell in with all, a lot of the wrong people who gave him a platform and, um, you know, and, you know, then he had a lot of personal issues as well, but, you know, he just, but the more that the, the more that the wrong people were, you know, uh, wooing him on, uh, you know, into their camp, yeah, the more he started getting off in his own teaching. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the way it goes. But again, that's when you're self-serving, then whatever is expedient to get in your face out there is what you go with, which, again, is the whole wrong attitude in any ministry. But that's the way that's typical, though, unfortunately. Yeah, it's everybody comes to a crossroads. If anybody gets any kind of name rec- recognition at all, you come to the crossroads where you know that you're either going to have to play politics mm-hmm. or you're not going to play the game. And then you, right. don't, you don't go to those platforms. So you, you don't have those kind of platforms where you're preaching and getting $100,000 honorariums and they're flying you first class to come mm-hmm. and they want to rub shoulders with you you don't get there unless you play politics and then you have to compromise on the truth so it's just it's not worth it really because god will bless your ministry no matter how small it is and so uh, it's it's hard to understand how anybody that really knows the lord and loves the lord could fall into these traps but they do it's a snare and, yeah. you know, and it's a stand and I've talked to so many who compromised with TBN and they've always said, well, if my voice wasn't out there, then some other worse voice would be there. I'd rather have them take my slot than me. You know, that was typical discussion I had with Hal Lindsey. But, but, you know, it's like, well, the confusion comes in the babble. <laughs> you know, because you, you, you're not all, all saying the same thing, but you're not... You're not calling out the ones who are who are speaking error because if you do, they'll pull the plug on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you have to let it slide, and so you're given the impression that you know, kumbaya, we're all in this together. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's sad. It's, it's a sad. trap. It's, it's a, a trap. trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. And I thank God the Lord got me out of that trap. I saw it, and I said, no, I'm not going. I'm not going that way because it's. You can't compromise the truth. The truth is very important, and, and you can't compromise God's word. And you, ha- you have to get people to the point where they're going to read the Bible on their own, and they're not going to, t- going to be, have this dependence on the Sunday morning service or on the pastor to tell you what the Bible says. You have to know it yourself. And test what the pastor says. Yes, test they everybody. Like, some of them don't like that, though. Well, no, they don't like it. They, they, I was listening to uh, some audios today, and, and the brothers were saying, yeah, remember the shepherding movement, and they taught you you had to, your pastor was your authority, and you had to be under his authority, and he had to look out for your life, and, and uh, he had to guide your life and everything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah right. no, uh, you, it, it, that's not normal. For anybody. No, they can't guide their own lives. They can't they guide exactly. yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They can barely keep their families, their family problems together. So, and it's not even fair to do that to a man. No. Oh, absolutely not. Where's Where's that in the in in scripture as far as what a pastor's you know position is? It's you not know? there. No. And the pastor doesn't have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. No. It's it's the, the 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 gathering. Every member has a gift, and they all should be ministering one to another in those gifts. But you don't see that in the in, in the business model of a church. You know, the pastor's on payroll, so he has to do all that. Well, and that's the, it's not that's, gifted for all that. No, he's not gifted. But there's not even there's no scripture for that. There's fivefold ministry. Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, yeah. Everybody's supposed to work together, but we 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 had talked about this the other day about, and I was thinking the same thing. Like once a month is enough to meet somewhere, 
in an assembly and you share the word and maybe you share a meal or whatever, but this whole model that they have now with the pastor worship and uh, people are more ignorant of the word than ever when they're following yeah. these, these men. The, and the, some the, of their the, tra- they never take off their training wheels. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly, and they, the Bible says to grow up. Depend. See, yeah, we're supposed to grow up and feed right. yourself. You can't be a baby forever. So, but they they foster that dependency, and it's it's perverted. Well, that's been around for a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> you know, because you know what we've been talking about with uh, the original, well, I wouldn't say the original, but one of the major original false prophets back in the day that, uh, you know, that we've been talking about. He, some of these guys just set the stage for the others to, to follow because it's, it's the wrong type of ministry, but it, got, it gets attention, you know, and we're talking about the, the healing movement, you know, the, the, the fake healers back in the day. And, um, and they were, you know, doesn't mean that people never got healed, but it means that people, the, 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 those in the healing movement, like, oh, the whole list of so-called God's generals from Oral Roberts to Catherine Kuhlman to, uh, A.A. Allen and William Branham, they, they were always trying to outdo each other. Well, they Uh, drew attention to themselves instead of to Jesus. Yeah, and so those things, the, they kind of laid a foundation, I believe, that um, to this day, they're the God's generals that so many of the false teachers of today look towards. Yeah. And um, there's... Yeah, we did when, when, when I was in Word of Faith. Oh, yeah, we, we were big on the generals, Branham, Dowie, Maria Woodworth, Edder, Smith, Smith Wigglesworth. Parnum. Well, we weren't real big on Parnum because we oh. never knew we we never knew uh, that much about him. Yeah, or going back to Azusa Street. Yeah, and well, some uh, of those things. Yeah, we heard about Azusa Street, but we didn't pay so much. Anyway, the people I knew, we didn't pay that much attention to uh, Parnum, or, or we heard about Azusa Street, and we were like, "Wow!" And so that kind of thing. But as far as really studying those. Uh, so-called revivals, we, we really didn't study what was going on because there were so many, there was Hagen during my time in the 80s, oh, yeah. and yeah. then there was Rodney Howard Brown in the 90s. So we had um, our own things. And yet they, they played off the others that came before them. And I think of someone like Benny Hinn, who just idolized yeah, Catherine Yeah, he Coleman. idolized Catherine. Oh, Catherine, who we never met. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, she, and, they were best friends. He would even try to emulate her and yeah, take on like her, her mannerisms yeah. and, and come out, you know, he, he really did. So, so these things never got kind of nipped in the bud on the way. They just kind of exponentially grew upon themselves, you know, with yeah, the, you would the think foundation. That, of these we guys. would think the guy was weird imitating a woman the way he did. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's so funny because Benny claimed that, oh, I think it was Catherine Kuhlman who would start her programs off with the song, How Great Thou Art. Yeah, yeah. And so when they would, add, when they were say, oh, Benny Hinn, you know, he comes out on the stage. As he comes out on the stage, they're playing How Great Thou Art. And all the yeah, people are yeah, lifting yeah, their hands yeah. towards Benny. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were all waiting for uh, uh, Benny to do something. Instead of waiting for Jesus to do something, but that's the thing that scared me when I used to have these healing services, and then people were looking for my hands. Man, that scared me, and I said no. Um, but, well, you know, Benny had that way of knocking people over like a bunch of dominoes. You yeah, know? and and again, uh, that there was real power. I was in one of those meetings. As a matter of fact, I was I was a guest of Benny's. Believe it or not, at this at this one. Even though I was a critic, he still invited me to come. But then he had his guy take me around. This was in Philadelphia, well, a long time ago, in the 90s. And the, and, and the guy who was, who was showing me around backstage and everything um, in, in, the, in the trailers that they had set up for the broadcast, they told me, uh, you don't want to sit in the front row. 
And I go, what? And he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes, no one in the front row uh, stays in their seat. They they all get blown over. And, and, and so I don't think you want to, I said, yeah, that, I'm not going to be blown over. And he goes, you'll be better off. I'll put you in the fourth row. And so I said, okay. And so Benny knew where I was sitting, you know, because this was all set up and beforehand. And when me and my friend, you know, sat everybody, he wanted everybody standing up when he came out and he started doing that stuff with knock. And I'm telling you, when he kept shoving his hands towards us, yelling fire and all of that towards us, me and my friend stood there kind of hand in hand, her, her and I, and, and, and praying. And, and we stayed standing while people were falling all, and they were falling all over us. Yeah. In fact, the, the lady who was on my friends, the other side of my friends, kept trying to pull her down to make her come down too. And she had to pull her hand back so that she wouldn't. And we just, we just looked right back at Benny. <laughs> You know, because but I could feel a wave of some sort of energy coming towards us. Yeah. And it was evil because in my discernment that it wasn't holy. It was something very unholy. So he really was working with powers. I don't know if he still is or not, uh, but at that time he was. And I think some of these things, including things that I've been, you know, looking re looking at old notes on William Branham that, you know, there were a lot of, there was something supernatural and strange going on around him. Yeah. And um, so, so, you know, the devil is an angel of light and he would even try to present his messengers as messengers of righteousness when, when these guys are anything but that. Yeah. But, and then the other thing is do the main, the most important thing is Okay, they have all these signs and wonders and miracles, but they don't have integrity. Then they they're fleecing people for money. Yeah. So yeah. You, then you have you have to write it off. You have to write them off. Yeah, Rodney Howard Brown's a pro at that. Yeah, he's I very mean, good. At, he's very whoa. good. Whoa. And and again, he he imitated Benny Hinn. I have that one video. I think I have it on my Christian Sentinels. Um, uh, well, my Jackie Elner YouTube page. I have the uh, a clip of. Of, ben, of uh, Rodney Howard Brown on Benny Hinn's show, and Rodney says, "Well, you know, I did the, when you when you weren't around. I sat in your chair so I could get soak up some of your anointing, uh, and 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 I was I was just you know making a joke, imitating you, and then God like struck him down or something, you know, for doing that, and this kind of stuff. So, see, they they they." They have this transference of a yeah, of, trans of anointing. They want the, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and that's what he was trying to get off of Benny's chair. Yeah, we were big on that. Oh, <laughs> oh no. was it, whoever laid hands on you, Norval Hayes or Kenneth Hagen or oh. whoever had the big time anointing. Oh, yeah, you wanted that. Oh, you wanted them to lay hands on you so they could transfer some of that on you. Oh, you know, there's nothing biblical about that. The laying on of hands is to pray for the sick. Lay on hands and anoint with oil. You know, that's what James, in, in the book of James, if someone's sick, then 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 the, the elders pray over them and, and, you know, anoint them with oil. But, but that's not the anointing as if we still have kings. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. I, <laughs> Jesus is the anointed one. And and all believers are the priesthood. Yes. We're the priesthood of believers with one high priest, and yes. that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So, right. and that's where a lot of these denominations go out of whack. Like you know, of course, Catholicism thinking that they're part of some Melchizedek priesthood when yeah, there's only yeah. <laughs> there's only one with the Melchizedek priesthood, the one who had no beginning and no end. Yeah, they're big. But on, anyway, they're big on the Melchizedek priesthood, but. And, and and now looking back on it, it's like, ooh, why would I want Kenneth Hagin to lay hands on me? And ooh, why would I boy. want Benny Hinn? And the first time I ever saw Benny Hinn was in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, when Norval had him at a convention. And Benny comes out, and he's saying that all the animals could talk. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That was and before he had the, the fall. nine. Yeah, yeah, he had the nine holy spirits, and they could fly yeah. and talk. I'm like, right. uh, I don't well, know. Yeah, he, how he put it was that somehow that if you have the anointing of something, then you can do whatever that one given you with anointing could do. I mean, yeah, yeah. It 
it's it's insane that even with all the exposing again there was many ministries that were exposing these things as as these things are being established back in the you know the late 20th century and um you know people not not as many people are are confronting this stuff anymore there's a lot of prophecy teachers and prophecy conferences but you don't see a lot of people you know helping yeah with the defense of the faith that's anymore true. that's very true that's very yeah true. yeah what happened i i know that that's true but they want to they want to be popular so uh, i watched that one prophecy conference that you went to and i i said jackie and i say the same things that these guys are saying so I was like where's the prophetic news I want I want to hear about the state of the church and how we and some of the ways we can fix the things that are going on uh, I didn't hear any of that so yeah you're exactly right though there's uh there needs to be more loud voices out there defending the faith and trying to rescue people from what's coming. We can see the right. handwriting is on the wall more than ever, especially with the state of the country and the things that are going on. And so we better try to rescue rescue some people. Yeah, because there's plenty of people talking about Bible prophecy, but when I did, uh, back in 99, I put together the great apostasy, the lost sign, and the reason I called it the lost sign is even back then, people were not paying attention to the apostasy going on in the so-called church. Yeah. And so that's why I presented all of, what, what 99 clips in that thing, or however many it was, in order to demonstrate how... The, the the church was being affected by false teaching. It not, it was no longer just the cults. It was inside the church, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, my somebody who was in ministry with us in in Philadelphia when we when we had Eastern Christian Outreach. Roger, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he uh, was running our table at one of the conferences that we were doing, and he said that Chuck Smith. He was part of it, and Chuck came to the table and talked to him, and Chuck looked at our our tapes and our information, and he says, he says, you know, I'm so glad that there's ministries like this because, he says, I can't speak about those things. He says, because it, as soon as I do, I'll be accused of trying to uh, steal the sheep from, the, from those people. And so, therefore, I'm glad there's ministries like yours. But... We didn't get a lot of support. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even carry our books in his in his bookstore. Yeah, so uh, much, but, so much for he likes what you're doing. Yeah, I, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, but you don't see, don't rock the boat. I won't get any invitations on TBN, which he did. Of course, and I yeah. write to him about that too, and I go oh, well. I don't go into that, but. Yeah, I mean, it, but I think he spoke for for a lot of pastors when he said that, that you know he he well, can't. What are you a pastor for? Don't yeah. be a pastor then if you can't tell people the truth. Yeah, you might as well wanna, hang it up. Yeah, yeah. Don't bother. He'll, he'll be accused of sheep stealing. Well, who cares if he, who cares if you're accused? Well, of maybe sheep he stealing. should steal some sheep. Yeah, if he's yeah exactly. Steal them out exactly. Of the mouth of wolves, right? Yeah, exactly. Why? Well, who? They're not his sheep anyway. They're not. The other guy's sheep. These people think they own people. <laughs> oh, boy. They're the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not your sheep anyway. Anyway, if Jesus could speak through, not Jesus, if the, if the prophet's voice came through a donkey, like, who do you think you are? <laughs> somewhere, uh, if people think well. there's really something going somewhere to happen. These guys, it's so perverted. But I think that's why, again, then of course TBN worked so hard on labeling anyone who criticized, yeah, yeah, labeling them as heretic hunters. Yeah, well, I like that label. I don't yeah, mind yeah. it at all. Thank you very much. And so that that it became They're unpopular. Still saying it. Yeah, it became oh, unpopular. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so oh, don't even listen to them because they're they're the ones dividing the church. Yeah, 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 yeah. They like and to And of course, it's error that, that divides. Yeah, not yeah. Truth. yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. Yeah, well, they, they love to uh, twist that scripture about oh, no. who brings division and uh, 
I had somebody on YouTube today saying, well, that's gossip. But it's not gossip when you're telling the mm. truth about a situation. Look, if somebody's a public figure and you put yourself out there on television, you're a public figure. So, uh, and you're collecting money from people to do your so-called ministry, then you should be open to somebody making comments about some of the things that you're doing. And yeah, and not only that, if they, if they, you know, it, it strengthens you. I think, you know, constructive criticism. Sure it does. When you get it, because then you might try to see things from another person's perspective yes. and then tighten up your own position. But, I mean, it's good to have discussions. And even if it, people are taking a different position than you, maybe you're wrong or maybe you don't have the balance in something. That's you know. true. Constructive. But, yeah. Yeah, constructive. constructive. Not <laughs> not slamming. What right have you to say anything against this guy? How many people have you saved compared to Joe Blow over well, there? Well, they don't know. I, We've been around a forty something years, so <laughs> in uh, in our Christian walk. We don't know everything, but I think we can impart some kind of wisdom to people that are younger and uh in the faith. So yeah, we, but yeah. yeah, not everybody knows everything, but it, you'd be surprised. So I, I asked the people then, uh, they don't like you accusing the miracle sellers and the, and the seed faith people that tell you to give God money when God's not getting it. And uh, they're getting the money and then God's going to do miracles. So I always ask them the question, well, then you approve of this person doing the miracle selling? And they never answer me. I love what Jesus, how Jesus said, you know, when, about paying taxes, you know, he says, you know, whose, whose face is on that, that coin? Well, whose face is on our money? He says, render under Caesar, the things that are Caesar and unto God, the things that are God's. So he obviously didn't recognize money as something to tithe or something that belongs to God when it belongs to Caesar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so pay your taxes, people. And it's people. dirty. He's called it filthy lucre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he wasn't he wasn't promoting wanting wanting the dollars. They were hungry. He'd go out and get a fish, and you had to pay taxes. We'll get the coin out of the fish's mouth, but <laughs> not that we can do that. Uh, yeah, well, it would be nice if we could go. And yeah, but you pick know, it off he, the money he made tree. the distinction. He made the distinction. Yeah. And and that people aren't, you know, they they don't apply that to today. Even though, it, again, it's not his face on our money. I mean, I'm glad our money still says in God we trust because if the lefts have their way, they'll take that off the money. In fact, pretty soon we won't even have any money. Yeah, exactly. It, it'll all be digital. Exactly. But yeah, it baffles me when I see people falling for this stuff going up with their envelopes and tears in their eyes and handing some rich pre preacher that's flying around in a $4 million jet or a $20 million jet and living in a $50 million mansion, and they're going up there with the tears in their eyes and their envelopes, hoping mm. that God will do something for them. And I'm thinking, like, what is wrong with you? All you have to do is ask, and God will do something for you. Because God's not getting the money anyway. They can tell you all they want that you're giving it to God. What's he going to like do? Like a bunch with of it? a bunch of gold diggers. They just want what's on the table, you know. Instead of the the instead of the master, they want what's on his table. Yeah, exactly. That, but that's so prevalent. It's it's more prevalent than ever. When yeah. when you when you look at some of the TV shows and you look at some of these conferences that they have on uh, YouTube or Rumble or BitChute or wherever you look at your videos. And it's so pre it's still so prevalent today. And are any of those people increasing your love for Jesus Christ? Are they increasing your desire to be with him and um, looking for his coming? And do they do they enhance your devotion and your trust and your love for that for, for our Savior? Are they doing that? Do we even hear that message anymore? They're not doing it because they're putting they're teaching people to put their faith and trust in the seed. Yeah, and yeah. not in the in the in the uh, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father that He so loved the world that He gave. So He He'd give you anything. He's your Father. 
that that gets lost in the shuffle somehow. Yeah, it uh, does. and most too often, not always. I mean, there's there's good teachers. Yeah, there's out good there. teachers. Yeah, and, not everybody. And, that's we're not saying everybody. No, but no. In fact, 90%. I like to listen. I love to listen to to some good teachers, and there's yeah. some good ones on on YouTube. And to to listen to them, you're just like, oh, amen. You know, it's right. It, it's it's exciting when you find others who are lifting up. Yeah, Jesus who are and, like-minded. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It, it, I, it's, I want more of them. Yeah, I do too. I, that's that's why I say it baffles me because I can't with all the information that we have. I can't even believe when I see people doing going up with these. The other the other day, this person had the the seed offering was. Uh, send this, uh, send the seed up to heaven, and God will descend the blessing down to you. Hmm. It was the ascension seed. Oh, the ascension yeah. seed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's always a gimmick. Except it wasn't ascending; it was going right into their hands, and they had these yeah. big duffel bags, and and then they were shoving all. There must have been a couple thousand people that came in the line with the money, with the seed, and handed it to these two mm. rich people that were putting it in big duffel bags. Oh, I couldn't believe it. My heart went out but to those see, people. But you see, the God... The- but God doesn't put all the blame just on those false teachers. He also no, exactly. puts the blame on those who are following them You're because right. he, it's what their itching ears want to hear. And so they accumulate for themselves these false teachers. And so That's they true. have a lot to do with it, too, That's that, true. you know, the they don't read their Bibles. Them. That's right. They're not reading their Bibles yeah. because if they read their Bibles, they would find out that's wrong and then, then, then they wouldn't do it. Or if they listen to sound good teachers. But anyway, let's listen to this um, scripture first and then we'll talk about William Brand and, and these God generals things. But let's play okay. this. To him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Chapter 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Wow, that was loaded, wasn't it? Yeah, what passage is that from? 2 Peter Mm. 1 and 2, I took, took those, but how I feel like that. I'm vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Don't you feel like that too? Boy, and it gets wow. worse and worse. Yeah. And you think, boy, you don't even want to stick around here anymore because exactly. there's nowhere to go. <laughs> exactly. It's like, how are, how are we going to escape? But also, uh, 
if you wanted to read some of that letter, we want we can do it in sections that you got from the uh, person, or if you want me to play your introduction. Yeah, play the introduction first, and I'll dig up that letter. Okay, let's see. Which one is it here? I hope I downloaded it. Let me see. What was the name of that audio that you sent oh, me? Oh, what was it called? Um, Branham. Um, um, wait a minute. Uh, Branham Fleecing. Oh, okay. It's from the Fleecing I got that one. Okay. okay. Thank you for telling me. Let me play... Random fleecing. <laughs> okay, here it is. Quote the book, The Fleecing of Christianity. One of Paul Cain's major false prophecies is that a new breed of prophet would arise before the Lord's return that he referred to as Joel's army. This seemed to be a rehash of the vision of the latter rain slash manifest sun's outpouring that was first promoted by the late heretic William Branham. As a young man in the late 1940s, Kane had participated in some of Branham's crusades. William Branham was the greatest prophet that ever lived in any of my generation or any of the generations revival that I've lived through. Kane was quoted as proclaiming in a taped message called Joel's Army. The new prophets misinterpret the second chapter of the book of Joel as being a last day's army of overcomers when in fact it is a demonic army that is described in Revelation 9. Many of today's prophets, including Paul Cain and Benny Hinn, have glorified Branham in spite of the fact that he is a proven false prophet who taught that the new millennium and the return of Christ would happen in 1977. However, he did not live to see this non-event because he died in an auto accident in 1965. His followers expected him to rise from the dead and delayed his burial waiting for him to come back to life. The late Lester Sumrall often spoke of this expected outpouring before the Lord's return as he heard it from one of Branham's contemporaries, Smith Wigglesworth. Sumrall said that a dying Wigglesworth told him, the dead will be raised, cancer will be healed, no disease would be able to stand before God's people and that it would be a worldwide situation, not local thrust of God's power and anointing upon mankind. I will not see it, but you shall see it. Yet Sumrall died in 1996 and nothing even close to what was described happened before his death. That's true. Yeah, yeah, and that makes me think of, I don't know if I sent it to you or not, of what Mike Bickle said, because... The he, um, audio? Or yeah, the, the audio that. of Mike Bickle, because that played upon this idea that there was going to be this huge revival before the coming of the Lord. Yeah, Instead of an apostasy, talking about that. Though. Right, they're expecting some huge... Yeah master conversion and they're going to be, of course all of these guys are going to be the ones in charge of that that's going to bring about this huge revival yeah, yeah. i think you should play that one because it, it'll it, you'll see how they pick up and he's he heads up the ministry in kansas city he's you know the i can't remember the name of his church he changed the name of it i think um but uh i can look that up while you yeah playing. i'll play yeah. this then mike bickle Father, we're, we're all going to nashville again July 707, you know, 7707, July 7th this year, we're going to gather together in, in Nashville for a solemn assembly, a Joel 215, calling the people together. Now, Lou talked about this fast, this 40-day fast, and it's going to begin May 28th, and it's going to end on July 7th. So it's going to go the 40 days of preparation, and I believe that this is a sovereign uh, a dimension of the preparation of what God's going to be doing in this nation. It's not the only thing. He's, he's got strategi uh, strategies, very strategic things he's doing in other parts of the body of Christ and all, the, all across the world. Beloved, there's going to be a billion people come to the Lord in power. Yes. I don't mean yes. just kind of come to the Lord kind of barely, you know, not sure they're saved or not. I, I mean this soberly. The Lord is speaking this to prophetic people all through the nations. And, and, and I'm believing God for double that. But I, but I mean for real, this is going to happen. It's not going to happen in a vacuum. 
And it's going to happen in answer to concerts of prayer, to solemn assemblies, because as Lou said so clearly, when a nation is in crisis, and we're in a crisis on about 10 levels, that when the nation is in crisis, there's only one remedy. It's when the people of God, Joel 2, 15, they gather together, some in twos and threes and some in stadiums and, and you know, hundreds of thousands. When they begin to cry out to the Lord, then the Lord answers from heaven. He breaks in with the suddenly of the Lord. Oh, suddenly. And then the suddenly yeah. of God is going <laughs> to come in the wake of that. Where suddenly God begins to break forth in power. Miracles in such large numbers of people getting saved. The shift of whole nations in the spirit will happen suddenly, but it won't happen in a vacuum. It's going to happen in the wake of this global prayer movement that God is raising up right now sovereignly across the earth. Yeah, and that's the name of his church, International House of Prayer. I House hope. of Pancakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah House of Pancakes. Yeah, <laughs> and they're going to be the ones that are going to spring this, and not only a billion people, but he's even hoping for double that. And, yeah, of sure. course, now that was back in 2007. Yeah. That was on a Praise the Lord program. I know this suddenly, because that's a big term they all use. Is, yes. You're going to get your you, suddenly. <laughs> When he mentioned Lou, he was speaking of Lou Engel, yeah. and he was the one who spoke right ahead of him. And the speaker ahead of Lou Engel was Che On. Now, Che On is a false prophet out of, uh, where's his church, Pasadena or somewhere in so Southern in California. California yeah. You know, and he's one that has latched on to a couple of the Calvary Chapel guys um, in, in Southern California, yeah. too, to get, to get credibility. Yeah. And so these guys were were promoting Lou Engel's The Call. Now, that was from 7707, you know, Oh, yeah, seven's a big number to them. And I believe that was the one where they had the, the Catholic priests up on the platform in this, you know, this stadium, and, and Lou went and... Oh, they and, were and washing his... Washing, the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, washing their feet. Oh, my. No, I don't, I'm see, not big on those foot-washing things. No, no, thank you. But... But they were, again, this is part of that false teaching that there's going to be a, an end time harvest. When yeah, actually yeah, yeah. The end time harvest, you know, and oh, and some are saying, oh, all the Jews are going to be saved in this end time harvest. Well, no, because they're going to look upon him whom they've pierced as he, as he returns, and then they're going to believe. So that's not some big revival until Jesus actually returns. Then they look upon him and they mourn as for, an, you know, their only son. Uh, so anyway, they've got that all messed up. When the great apostasy is what happens, it's quite the opposite. It's that's the time the opposite. of the Church of Laodicea, which is the ones that they're, they're rich, they need nothing, and, you know, yeah. they, they know how to manipulate the laws. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they have the, the laws of prosperity, the laws of the hundredfold return that God has to give it to you. Yeah, and if you, you know, you've watched this Lou Engel, this yeah. man that, that, again, that they were all there, you know, joining together on that Praise the Lord program, which was actually uh, hosted by Steve Hill, you know, the original. Oh, yeah, we, he passed guy. away, didn't he? Yeah, he said, yeah, he yeah. passed away. He passed away. But... You know, but this is, they were all in this together. Good to have this billion man army, Joel's army, which they say is the last army. Again, that goes into this whole false teaching of the manifestation of the sons of God. Yeah, the false manifest teaching. sons of God. Yeah. 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 Joel's army, which Joel's army is locusts. <laughs> you know, but we won't, we won't get off on that. <laughs> but they want to be part of the locust army. Um, <laughs> Just like um, in Malachi, um, when it talks about the devourer. Yeah, it's talking about the, the devourer is going to eat up your crops, which is some insect. But they yeah. always, always tell you that if you don't tithe, the, dev <laughs> the devourer is coming. But you see, they're still at it. But it, again, this started back all the way with Branham, that there, he was going to be, he was the Elijah to come, and he was going to bring in this big end times army and this big end times revival. Uh, when, you know, it's really sad if you look at like Pew Research and some of these, you know, other uh, poll takers, they have found that Christianity is a dying breed 
not only in Europe, which it has been, you know, post-Christian era in, in the UK and Europe for an awful long time, but now it's hit here where they've taken polls and found that only now only like 30 percent of Americans even believe in God anymore. It's it's really bad because it's on the other side. And again, because TBN and the other Christian stations that have brought shame upon the name of Christ, yeah. they did their job. And, yeah, and now take, yeah. and now the no one will even listen to the gospel. You try to give it to them and go, yeah, well, I saw that preacher on TV and then he just wants your money. And they'll go through this whole thing that they they stop up their ears because of what they've seen on Christian television. Yeah, that does happen. That oh, does all the happen. time. All the time you have to undo the damage they did yeah. talking to people just to try to say, don't pay attention to them. Let's look at Jesus. What can you say about Jesus? What issue do you have with him? I mean, yeah, these exactly. people who use his name to get money, right. you don't want to listen to that. That's true. And then, of course, you have to set a standard with your own ministry where you don't do the begging and you don't do the apps. Right. And you, 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 if you're going to teach, if you want people to respect you, you have to live by faith and practice that, that you trust God to meet your needs so you can prove to people then that you're not in it for the money. And not everybody is like that. But again, the people themselves, they want what their itching ears want to hear, and it's not what you or I have to say. So well, they, they like the, ma- bells the majority, and yeah, they want yeah, they want an, they want instant everything, instant miracle, yeah. in, instant prosperity. And it doesn't happen that way. There's no get rich quick schemes in the word of God. You ha- the Bible says that you have to work, otherwise you don't eat. And it takes <laughs> It t- could take a whole lifetime to accumulate uh, enough money to to uh, have your needs met. It's not something that happens overnight. So they promise people the world, but they can't deliver, and then they have all these shipwrecked lives. But hopefully some of these people are going to learn their lessons. But there's even a scripture in Micah 6 and who, who preaches this, that thou shalt sow, but thou shalt not reap? <laughs> mm. <laughs> who says no, they, that? They, they skipped over that yeah. one. <laughs> no, it was that one that, oh, Jan Crouch used to use all the time, that you come before the king with a gift, you know, that had to do with, you know, it, it came out of Esther, where Esther... Yeah, well, who did that yeah. to Jesus? Who came up to I him with money? Know. Nobody ever you, did yeah. it. Yeah, so so because she had to go to King Ahasuerus or whatever. Yeah, with, well, with, yeah, you know, sure. Then, oh, then I want to hear what Jesus taught. Don't yeah. tell me that. Uh, what did he what, do? Yeah, not what the Persian king required. Yeah, <laughs> because that's totally different. We're our, our example in the New Testament is how Jesus behaved. That's how we're supposed to operate our ministry. He didn't beg anybody for anything. He never told them, look, I need $5. And... Or if you need me to do something for you, please, that'll be $10 before. <laughs> <laughs> pay up. <laughs> yeah, pay up or else. I well, curse and I found you. that letter that you were referring okay. to earlier. Yeah, because in that scripture in Peter, they are talked about what you're going to mention, about the voice coming out of the sky and saying, oh. this is my beloved son. So go ahead. Okay, well, again, we'll. I'll just read... Boy. We'll break it up. So you yeah, it's hard to break it up when this man kind then of we'll illiterate. Then we'll talk he about he, a li- you know the, some the, of the, the things. All that says. I read to you the other day, not you saw it. I, I gave you a PDF or a picture. Yeah, it was of it. a it was a long letter, in, and he doesn't break it into paragraphs. But I'll try well, to find kind some of subject the, matter that he yeah. that he talks about because there okay. was a couple subjects in that letter. All right, let's see. It was about it was regarding the video. And sp- explain to the people. Yeah. What okay, the well the is. video, this was this was dated in 2001 and he got a hold of our video the the great apostasy, the lost sign. And in that I did uh, deal with the God's generals. That's how I started it out with showing Branham and AA a. Allen and all of those and and showing and this, some of the stuff that was presented by 
that another false teacher by the name of Robert Learden, and he's the one that wrote the book God's Generals and did the series. And so yeah, I, was, yeah. I, was, I started off my video with critiquing his, his lifting of these men. And so this man is one of these followers. Now, I had heard before that Brennan had a huge cultic following out of South Africa. This came out of um, Durban, Natal, South Africa on May 22nd, 2001. And he says to Mr. and Mrs. Bill and Jackie Elnor, he's, he spelled my name E-L-N-O-R instead of A-L. And he says, Dear Sir, Madam, I urge you to hear the tapes and read the books of Brother Branham before you class him a false prophet. I believe that you will get a better understanding of his ministry. He did not boast of meeting the angel of the Lord, as you assumed on the video. Brother Branham only did what the angel instructed and never boasted of it, which I don't even know where he gets that. I don't know. But any anyway. have all these words of knowledge and he could tell you your name and your address and what was wrong with you. But before the services, and he showed one of these prayer cards, people ha that wanted to be prayed for by Branham had to fill out a card. And on the card was their name, their address, and what their condition was. And it, they were numbered. So they had all the information ahead of time. And then Branham would call these people out and then he would tell them their name, their address, and what was wrong with them. Like he was getting a word of knowledge, or mm. he was a prophet. But they had, the people had already put the information on these cards. Yeah, I have, um, I'm looking further down in this letter, and I see where this man took issue with, with actually, it's not even something that I said. It's something that Robert Learden says as if it was a good thing. And uh, so this guy writes, I have the tape where the lady playing the piano got in the spirit and left the piano and danced around and the piano never lost a key and it kept playing. Uh, and it, it, yeah, uh, that tape was circular. I remember that tape. Uh, okay. When I was in as Word if, of Faith, that was a big deal. Left. Yeah, so the piano, play, it was a player piano or something? The, she was away from the piano and it kept playing? <laughs> so. I don't think, yeah, it might have been a player piano. Maybe that's what it was. But even with a player piano, you have to use the foot pedals. Oh, that's true, that's true. He says, everything here in this ministry was not paranormal, as you put it, but it was supernatural. Yeah, I think yeah. you and your husband and Mr. Chambers should carefully read the Bible before making any comments concerning <laughs> Brother Branham. Yeah, so well, we read the Bible. We read the yeah, Bible. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> He's speaking of Joseph Chambers. Yeah, Joseph um, Chambers, Paul Creek Ministries. Yeah, Paul Creek. Now, I did help him with his Gods and Goddesses TV. Yeah, those were I, good videos. Yeah. yeah, I supplied him Spirit with all the... Spirit of the those, Serpent, was that one yeah, about? Oh, the, that was the, the Hagen one. Yeah, that now, was see, really good. Yeah, well, see, he supplied me... I supplied him with the tapes for the Gods and Goddesses of TBN, all of the... All of the older, you know, videos of the the things that were quoted in 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 Christianity in Crisis. See, he went to he he went to CRI trying to get those clips, and they they wouldn't give them to him, and so they were my clips. So wow. someone told him, someone told him he she, I that those were my clips, and so I supplied him with all the ones he wanted. In fact, I every one he wanted, I had. Oh, <laughs> so, good. Yeah, those were a real blessing to me at the time when I was coming out of all that mess. Yeah, and so he gave me, in exchange for all of that, he gave me the whole nine-hour VHS of something a lady had sent him, and, and that has gone viral on YouTube. And that's the one of that's the one he did on Hagen and the Serpent. And, that was and great. sticking yeah. out his tongue. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so he gave me that entire thing, and I copied the whole thing and sent it back. And then when I posted some of that, somewhere or maybe i can't remember if i get no i think i did yeah that's right i used it in my great apostasy video i got a, a letter from the lady who provided that to chambers and she says when i sent that to him i just wanted him to look at it and copy it and send it back to me and i never got it back and so i copied my copy and gave it to her yeah Be because she was, I, I even saw her name on the, on the VHS. Oh, yeah, well, she that would want me. that, yeah. Yeah, so I made I sure. I sent that one to David Wilkerson, uh, Spirit of the Serpent. Yeah, so that's why he, I guess, I guess because he saw the same clips, I guess, between the two of us, he mentioned Chambers to me because I 
didn't we didn't mention him or he didn't mention me but anyway that's kind of funny so he says so and back to this letter let's see um oh let's see where so what did you let's see what part had to do with peter let's see well the oneness that they don't believe in the trinity oh 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 okay mention that and then i have a clip of that Uh, okay let's see See, he says, you are, assume, you are presuming without authority of the scriptures, calling Brother Branham a false prophet. You cannot show me one place in the Bible where anyone was baptized in any other name besides the name of Jesus. Mr. Chambers calls this teaching the oneness cult, and yet it is in the Bible. So I ask you and Mr. Chambers to read it in the scriptures that it is in the Bible, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptism, which are titles of uh, is the mother harlot's teaching of revelation 17 and it is not a bible doctrine uh brother brandon was the elijah of today of malachi 4 and matthew 17 and revelation 3 blah 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 and and yeah that's and that's because we said we mentioned that he was one as pentecostal in other words the belief of modalism that Jesus, or that the Father became the Son and the Son became the Holy <laughs> yeah, Spirit. And that's why I played that clip where the voice came out of heaven. So what yeah. was that? We were saying, yes. what did you, you said, did Jesus throw his voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a ventriloquist. He threw his voice into <laughs> yeah. like, no, the heavens. <laughs> what do they do with that scripture? Here, anyway, here's, here's William Brandon flip-flopping on the Trinity. And may mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Come in now, the promise, the comforter that you said you would stand. Jesus is no third person of a trinity. He was the trinity in full. He was both Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. <laughs> and that was the revelation. And suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, buried, rose the third day, sitting at the right hand of God the Father, making intercessions now for we who've accepted the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The Trinitarian, the triune people that believe in the Trinity, which finally formed in the Catholic Church. Everything in God is in a Trinity. Get out of that old dead creeds and things that belongs to a Catholic Church is going to be consumed, and all of her daughters with it. Amen. No one can say that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, some kind of... And that thing, and they call the Holy Trinity, Trinity... I want somebody to find even the word Trinity in the Bible and come tell me about it. Amen. Just find the word Trinity. It's not even in there. God, we believe we're accepted in Christ Jesus, and he in return has given us the Holy Ghost. We love him. That great third person of the Trinity who burns through our hearts. What was it? It was the revelation Amen. of the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not being a second person of a trinity but being god himself (laughs) it was all over the place yeah well and and here's the thing in spite of that even you know i was reading the uh the personal freedom outreach um i sent you a copy of that too PFO article on William Branham that uh, Steve Cannon wrote. Yeah. And uh, he brought out something I didn't know, that Ern Baxter was yeah. was with Branham and that he knew that Branham was teaching false teaching. So he, he insisted on being the spokesperson and then just letting Branham do his healing stuff, but not any of the preaching because he knew he was a false teacher. But that's okay because he had that gift anyway so that he would be the speaker for him and, and, and not teach error. Yeah, and Ern Baxter was one of the, the Fort Lauderdale Five. Yeah, the ones yeah, he was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that the start of the whole shepherding yeah, movement. Yeah, he did. You mentioned yeah. that earlier, and you know, like from him and Derek Prince. And oh, that was so- disgusting. When I was just born again, maybe a year or two, when I went to a church and they were into that stuff, I got out of there pretty quick because man, they wanted to control your life. Yeah, well, that came from the Florida Five. Oh, and, it was uh, terrible. I was in Florida at the time, and <laughs> the pastor's wife like. Uh, I like, I'm very independent, and she, she, she hands me this book one day, with, and it's got a puppet on, on a string on the cover, 
and she wants me to read it. And I, I think it was by Bob Mumford or something. I was like, no, I don't think so. Don't yeah, know. he was one of them. I didn't want that book. Yeah, Bob Mumford was another one. I, I left that church. They know, came to my they... house. They knocked on the door. They were begging me to come back. I was like, no, thank you. Oh, because they were your authority. You yeah, couldn't leave yeah, church no. or even go to another one unless they said it was okay. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, my. Yeah, it was so, creepy, creepy. So, me out. so here, Ern Baxter was 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 covering for for this man. Did you okay. know somebody by the name of Leroy Cop? He had he was had something to do with that back then too, and with uh, Chuck Smith and the foundation of uh, Calvary Chapel. Because they no, were all kind, of, they were all kind of together at that time, but. That doesn't ring a bell, but I know that um, before Calvary Chapel, I think um, I think Chuck was part of the Foursquare Gospel and the, the Foursquare Church, which I believe was founded by Amy Simple, wasn't that? Yeah, her, she her founded thing? it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, here's brother. Here's a uh, Branham. I don't really like to say brother Branham because I don't think he really was a brother. But here's his. Uh, here he's talking about healing. The earth and the heavens and all there is knows that I'm telling the truth. That bird, when it flew away, a voice came from where the bird was in the tree like a wind caught in the bush. And it said, you will live near a city called New Albany. And I've lived from the time I was three years old until this time within three miles of New Albany, Indiana. I went in and told my mother about it what she thought I would just dreaming or something and I was sitting there just squalling it was in September because I wanted to go fishing I had to pack several tubs of water with little molasses buckets just about that high half a gallon because it's just a little lad of about seven years old and I'd pour them in a big tub and then go back and get a, another two buckets and come back pumping it that's the water we had and there's going to run off a batch of that corn whiskey that night these men with daddy up at the house and I was crying, and all at once I heard something making a noise, like a whirlwind, something like this. Now, I hope it isn't too loud, going, it's a noise like that. And I heard that noise, and I looked around, it's just as quiet as it is in this room. Not a leaf blowing nowhere, nothing. And I thought, where's that noise coming from? Well, I thought, must be away from here, just a lad, and it got louder and louder. I picked up my little buckets and squalled a couple more times and started up the lane. I was resting, and I got just a few feet from that, out from under the branches of this big tree, and oh my, it made a whirl sounding. Well, I started up the lane again, and I turned to look at this again, and when it did, a human voice, just as audible as mine is, said, don't you never drink, smoke, or defile your body in any way. There'll be a work for you to do when you get older. Why, well, like this scared me to death. You can imagine how a little fella felt. I dropped those buckets and home I went just as hard as I could go. <laughs> that wasn't about healing, but that's part of his testimony that we read that book, uh, that William Brandon book of his testimony, and yeah, oh, the, wi the wind blew and he heard the voice mm. and... He was special. Yeah, yeah, he was. And then he had that picture of the halo, which yeah, was his, yeah, which which was was a his aura. He had some aura. Yeah, yeah, they, they were big on that picture. But I think it was A Man Sent from God was the name of the book yeah, that yeah. came out. And we, oh, yeah, we read that book. And he, when these people, oh, they always had such miraculous things happened to them when they were children with the angels appearing and the wind rushing and so yeah well it's you know the problem is that what he started is still going on yeah bigger than ever yeah and they all and of course this they've always said that this so-called huge outpouring at the end times before jesus can come back that it's going to be with all of these manifestations and some have even said you know that well it's not just the the pianos that are going to play on their own but people are going to levitate and they're going to be you know uh, flopping around like a bunch of fish people out of water did, people did let that little boy little davy walker levitated in Branham's ministry. 
Yeah, you see, so these are these are these these signs and wonders, but the Bible talks about lying signs and yeah, wonders. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and that's more like it. <laughs> yeah, we're not we supposed see. to levitate. Here he is talking about healing. A cancer yeah. that come into your neck, uh, or and you're some sort of a teach in the scripture, and you Amen. believe that Jesus Christ makes you well. I do. Father God. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, on the authority of God's word by a dying woman, I ask this evil thing to leave her. Satan, you are exposed. So come out of the woman as the church of the living God calls for you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Sister, you. just a moment. I just want to talk to you. Of course, you know it's gone now. Oh, yes. It'll stay that way. See how your throat left? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Praise the it's Lord. It's all gone from her. The, the garter has left her throat. And she, God bless you. Go on your own now and be thankful. Happy and rejoice. And, and be, mm-hmm. Of course, you're sick. And you're suffering with uh, a condition. It's a, it's a dark spirit around you. It's death. And it's in a form of cancer. And the cancer is located on the breast. And you are seeing you're examined by someone strong, and it's a you got a, a ruptured condition. And the rupture is in the bowel. And you have a stomach trouble also. A severe heart trouble. It caused you fainty. Uh, uh, here a few days ago, you're sitting sideways on the side of a bed and nearly passed out looking towards your window. Are those things the truth? Yes, it's that all was true. All true. Well, whatever it was, of course, it's gone from me. But what do you think that was that knows your life? Was it Jesus Christ? You accept it to be that? Yes. Thank you. And I You're that. willing, you know that something supernatural is here. Yes. And if you believe it to be the Lord Jesus, as I have preached it out of the Word, and you believe it to be the Lord Jesus, yes, I, do. I know there's a dark spirit of fear hanging at you yet. It's something very serious. You said you'd accept it. Wow. That's awful. Well, you know, it's, it, it's sad because the things that are done in the name of Jesus, and it's interesting that he would address the Father in the name of Jesus Christ when he says there are there is no distinction. <laughs> yeah. But the the thing is the the poor woman suffering, she's sick and he read her card. He knew sure. it ahead of time and yeah. he's acting like God's telling him all this. Oh yeah. I it, I mean I've seen so many I mean we confronted Peter Popoff once with that. Yeah. I, I laugh only because it was a crazy, a crazy thing when we, uh, we when, when Peter Popoff was trying to make a comeback after he was discovered with his fake healing. Listening uh, device in his ear and his wife right. was telling him the same thing. She, yeah. I remember going to one of his meetings, well, way back in the early 1980s, and she, his wife, would stand out in the lobby and talk to people before the service. And she, I thought she was just being friendly, but she was <laughs> gathering information. That's right. And then it was amazing, Randy, the magician yeah, that yeah. exposed it all on the Johnny Carson and he show. he picked up on the radio signal. That mm-hmm. the, his and why wife, didn't the church expose that? It had well, to go exactly. to an atheist, amazing Randy, an atheist, and go on the Tonight Show exactly. to expose this and and hear her voice in the in the in you know whispering, telling these things in some sort of, you know, uh, you know a, a hearing device that he had in his ear, and and amazing Randy picked up on that and he played yeah. those tapes, you know, and you think that all the millions of people that watch that show would would would. You know, what would they think of Christianity after that when this is the exactly. guy that all the Christians are saying is the great one, you know? Exactly. But he's back on the air. He's back doing Pop-off the same thing. is. Oh, oh well, yeah. You know, a sucker born every minute, he's I hate to say this. He's back doing the same know, thing. Doing the the same Barnum and thing. Bailey. Yeah, William Barnum said that. Yeah. Sucker born every minute. Yeah. And, and and it's the same thing. Like, how 
how could he sleep at night, this guy Branham, when he knows that he's the phony? And these people are hurting, and they're coming to you for help, and you're making it look like it's you, the great, oh, I've got these words of knowledge, and I know all about you, and and it's, it's just yeah, despicable. Because they're lying in, in the name of Jesus, yeah. which is about the most blasphemous thing you could do. It, it just seems even close to the unpardonable sin. And, and you know, and I've, I wrote an article in the Sentinel one time years ago about going to that Morris Cirillo uh, meeting right across from the Philadelphia Children's Hospital. And they were bringing these children in these iron lungs and everything else in there. Um, you know, for the hope, last hope, you know, across, you know, they were willing them across the street from the children's hospital and those were all kept in the back and they never made it up to the stage. Yeah. And, and yet he, he faked a healing. Uh, anyway, I, I, uh, I don't know, Google it. I think I'm somewhere there and if you Google my name and Morris Cirilli, you'll see my story. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. I, yeah. I busted that one. Uh, I'm not and, saying, and, we're not saying Jesus doesn't heal. I've seen Jesus heal people. Sure. I've been healed absolutely. myself. And I know Jesus heals. But for these people to capitalize on other people's pain and make it look like it's them that has the gift instead yeah. of giving the glory to God. And you don't, you don't have to uh, tell people their name. I know my name. You don't have I know to my address. Yeah, and I know my address. So, <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. And I know well, what's wrong with me. And I know Jesus heals. He healed me. I am I am on extended time. I should have been dead when I was 30. Yeah. I had an aneurysm break in my head. Yeah. And they were telling everyone goodbye. And it was like the doctor's going, wow, we don't know what happened. Everything went right. Yeah, well, I know what happened. Uh, but anyway, that that's that's a whole other testimony. And yeah. Jesus I've, I've does seen Jesus heal. heal people, yes. Yeah, so, but yeah, especially in, in I mean, in my case, it it shocked the doctors. I mean, when I came back the next week for a different issue, the guy in the emergency room says, "Are you the one that had the broken aneurysm?" I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, what are you doing here?" You know, he says, we all said, oh, what a pity. She's so young. We all just assumed you were dead. And later, years later, when they looked at my, aut uh, my autopsy, they looked at my, <laughs> it, some, some, another neurosurgeon looked at those pictures. He says, we only see those in autopsy. So yeah, Jesus heals. Yes, he heals. And he does a good job too when he does it. Thank you, Jesus. We give Thank all, you, Jesus. all the glory to him, but uh, not to man. Anyway, let's no. play this clip here of uh, Paul Kane. Paul Kane, and he was an associate. Of the Kansas William. City Prophet. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Same with Mike Bickle and those guys. Go in July to Europe. Well, that night, uh, it seemed like it was after midnight, the telephone rang, and uh, Brother William Brennan uh, was calling, and he was in Jeffersonville, Indiana. And so, uh, after a little small talk, he said, Brother Paul, uh, I'll get right to the reason I'm calling. He said, how would you like to go to Europe? And I said, well, you know, it took me by surprise. And I said, to Europe? Did I hear you right? And he said, yes, how would you like to go to Europe? And here, you think you've arrived, you think you know everything by now. And uh, I didn't even know that the Lord was setting me up. And so I said, uh, well, I said, I'd, uh, I, I think I'd like to go to Europe. I said, this is kind of unique. That's the reason the stadiums are going to be filled. That's the reason all the sports arenas and all of the meeting places are going to be filled. And the open fields in Africa and everywhere else are going to be filled with hundreds of thousands and hundreds and hundreds of thousands. It's because the glory of the Lord has come back to the earth to show forth the power and the glory of Almighty God in a wonderful outpouring called the true water rain. Yeah. What was that? The true what? Ladder rain. Oh, the ladder rain. Oh, yes. And, of course, again, it, you know, Paul Kane, it turned out, was you know, caught in a homosexual liaison. Yeah, and, Manny. Uh, he yeah, was a homosexual. Yeah, he was a, yeah. I even saw his profile. He, again, the guys today are still, are still pointing yeah, to they Paul still, Kane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And and Bob Jones, who was another one of the Kansas City prophets, who was using his office to make the girls disrobe to minister to the yeah. prophets. Okay, uh, so these guys, they're 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 immoral and they're messed up all the way through with their teaching, with their with their lifestyle, and everything else. And and yet, because people want a sign, which is what. Jesus said an evil generation seeks after a sign. And that's what people are doing. These are sign seekers. It doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't do miracles still. But if he does, praise the Lord. But that's not what true believers are seeking for. We we seek him, not his signs. We seek him. We want to know him. Well, these guys say, well, they call themselves prophets like Paul Cain did. He's another one that had this spooky testimony about when he was a child and he was in his mother's womb and he was so special and he had all these (laughs) visions and yeah. And then he's a homosexual. So uh, for years he was a practicing homosexual, even going back to when he was associated with Branham in the, in the sixties or the fifties even. But and so. didn't Ken Hagen, didn't, didn't he get his assignment when he uh, had some near-death experience and went to heaven? He went to hell three times. Oh, yeah, his well, experience well, like, was he went to hell three times and got born again on the hell? third time. Yeah, in hell. He was in hell, and, oh, he, and he, went, he was at the gates, and then he went up into his body, then he died twice, and then he died three times, and then finally he got born again. It's like... Well, that's not scriptural. You can't get saved in hell. And then he he had this one testimony. I had the tape. I don't even know if I still have it somewhere where he said that uh, that he was preaching and all of a sudden God transported him in the spirit into this car. That yeah, was parked. yeah, that was one of his favorite stories. Oh, yeah. And it, and it was it was uh, he was he, he was in the, in the car with his fiance who was who was, you know, with her lover on Lover's Lane or yeah. whatever. And as and then when God put him back into his body again, he had he the people who saw him said he never stopped preaching that whole time <laughs> yeah. he was gone at the by location. <laughs> oh, he has a whole book called I, Be- I believe in visions. I think it's called, and it's oh. got his seven seven times Jesus appeared to him. So yeah, that book is it was like fascinating. Ooh. Jesus is Jesus walks into his room and sits down, oh, and they no. have a conversation. Well, he didn't tell you to stop lying. I think he had another Jesus. Yeah, I, it was I, another I, I Jesus. Those, yeah, I call those false Jesuses. Uh, <laughs> not, what do I say? Um, not Jesus, but but what is the Spanish word for Jesus? I don't know why I always say. No, not Jose. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Yes. Gosh, I haven't used that term in a long time, but that's what I would say. Those another Jesus are the Jesuses, not Jesus. No. But when you're in Word of Faith, you, that's it. We, we, yeah, we were sign seekers. We, we loved all those testimonies about trips to heaven and Jesus appearing and the voices, hearing the voices. And I never yeah. heard any voices. I never had no. any visitations. I wasn't really looking for that stuff either, but I think it, I think if you go looking for it, you might you might get a visitation, but it's not wow, going to be the real be Jesus. Both Oral Roberts and Benny Hinn have testimonies of their wives being choked and killed by some spirit in the middle of the night. Uh, so you don't want to be around people like that. <laughs> that you know that some awful things that you know attack their wives. Well, yeah, but that's it. That's word of faith. That's word of faith. But they say they teach you not to question anything. To don't question, especially the prophets. Do not touch God's yeah, anointed. anointed. And yeah. so you questioned, but then you felt guilty because you were questioning when you're not supposed to question. You just they tell you. Uh, Rodney Howard Brown was good at that. He would tell you bypass your mind. Don't That's even right. le- yeah. Don't yeah. even I let your mind that. go there. Yeah. Yeah. Just accept everything that we're doing and don't even think about it. Right. Right. Just submit and and uh, yeah. And don't don't engage your mind. That's true. But you see, it's still maybe it's maybe some of these things have lost their popularity. Maybe things are kind of petering out now that they that they have kind of brought all of Christianity into bad repute anymore so that 
I don't think they're getting away with it as much. And so they've had to kind of change their angle by putting on, on side shows instead, you know, and <laughs> yeah, having side. flying angels across yeah. the, you know. Ballet dancers. Yeah, right. Yeah, trains to, on the platform, beds. They bring beds into church. Yeah, right, right. It's now back to the to the Gypsy Rose Lee gimmicks. Yeah, the, the performances, the stage right. performances. But right. they do. I, I, I occasionally hear... Uh, them saying, "Yeah, they don't listen to those people that tell you you can't, you can't buy a miracle, or you, when you're sowing seed that you're buying a miracle. Don't listen to those people." So you know that people like us, we say that, and there's other people that say that. So they they hear those things, and so it has an effect on their psyche. Yeah. yeah. And, and you hope and pray that eventually, the Holy Spirit will get through to some of these people, and they'll repent. Yeah. Of their well, wicked I'm glad ways. that some of these preachers are just t- turning into song and dance men anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you could just see them for what they are. Oh, well, they're still flocking. They, I, I look at that Stephen Furtick and I say, I, I, I don't, this, what is it with this guy? And he's got a whole big, I don't know how many campuses they call them. They don't call them churches anymore. They're campuses. And God forbid you should have uh. a church with a name, like a biblical name. It's for, uh, Fabulous Church and Vu Church. And oh, yeah. This, I'm like, what? And so, yeah, yeah it's elevation. A whole, yeah, elevation, yeah. And yeah. So it's weird, and I don't, I don't get it, but they have big followings, and yeah. people are listening that Joseph Prince, he's got a huge following. And, and, they, and as far as teaching on the coming of the Lord, that's downplayed. They don't teach that anymore. That's kind of lost its uh, favor among them as well because, you know, they, they say that that's a negative thing. So Well, yeah, uh, well, they like your purpose and right, you're, you're right. wonderful and God's got yeah. a plan for you and you're going to get your suddenly. And yeah, so it's, it's the big, uh, it's all about you and your the life. God of surprises is another term I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's full of surprises. Well, it, it, life is what it is. It, it's, it is what it is. And so you live your life every day and yeah, God does. God does surprise you every now and then with things, but you can't make it happen. You can't make God do things for you. He's going to do it in His time when He thinks you're ready. He's not going to give you more than you can handle or something you can consume on your lust, like He says. So, I know I love His intervention in my life myself. Yeah, I love it too. Yeah, and and um, yeah, he's and good. it's not. It's not that it surprises me. It blesses me, and yeah. um, and increases my faith and and makes my devotion undivided. That's it, because I know, like uh, Abraham said, no man can say they made Abraham rich, but God. So, it's got to be that way. That no matter what God gives you, you know it's God, sure. and, and that it was no uh, man or no human. Gave or your you, own, or your own efforts, or your own efforts. Yeah, it's much right. better when God does it supternaturally. And, yeah, yeah, and then it, it and incre- He answers prayer. Yeah, and that increases your faith. Really, it yes. gives you, and you you can rest, Correct. which is nice. You yeah, don't have to keep going to peace. search for your miracle, and no. sowing in your seed and wondering how it's all going to happen and stressing yourself out to the point. No, there's a rest in God and then seeking mm-hmm. first the kingdom. That's the best way. And the peace that passes understanding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's that's wonderful. What, that's what we enjoy. We really do. So that's our show for today. And it was such a blessing. It's always good to be here with you, Susan. Yeah, it was a blessing. Good program. I'm sure that people will be blessed i want to thank you for coming on jack and we'll be talking okay my and pleasure. laughing and having a good time in the lord yeah <laughs> all right so god all bless right. you thank you so much thank you all right everyone that's our program for today and remember the most important thing is are you born again 
Have you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Have you asked him to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins? There is a heaven and there is a hell. You will go somewhere when you die. Choose heaven this day. Choose whom you will serve. Jesus said in the third chapter of John that you must be born again. First you're born of your mother, and then you must be born again of the Spirit of God. You say, well, how do I, how do I get born again? You ask Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be your Lord, and to forgive you of your sins because we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's that simple. Salvation is not difficult. And you'll see how God will change your life and give you a brand new life, and he'll give you peace that passes all understanding. He'll give you joy, unspeakable and full of glory, because he is the Prince of Peace. God bless you today. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Shall I be?